I once cat sat for a 29-year-old cat. She would sit at the bottom of the stairs and yowl pitifully to be carried up. She couldn't find her bowl anymore and had to be fed a spoonful at a time. She had to sleep in the bed with me and I had to walk her to the litter tray during the night. Then I spoke to her owner after the cat sitting had finished and she informed me that the cat needed none of these things, was perfectly capable of climbing stairs, feeding herself and slept in her basket and had simply identified me as a soft touch. I went over to visit a couple of weeks later and the cat ran straight to the bottom of the stairs and started yowling. Dear Diary, made another stranger my bitch. PSA, your therapist is probably not looking at the clock because they hate you, but because they have a question in mind and need to know if there's time to actually deal with it. From a therapist friend, in case any in-therapy friends ever worry about this. And this is because it would be really shit of them to open up your entire brain into hysterical upset and then boot you out without helping you find equilibrium. But there is probably someone right after you, just to fully articulate. Yeah, exactly. When I do therapy, I always keep an eye on the clock so I know when I have enough time to keep opening up big issues versus when I have to work on getting them back to stable so they don't leave my office and walk straight into a wall. Good to know! When I was in school, one of my art teachers used to say, This world needs more creators. There's more than enough destroyers in the world today. Just a reminder, if you create anything, art, writing, food, machines, ideas, equations, knits, tools, gardens, the world needs you. This makes me happy. Happy creating, everyone! This is good to hear. It's really easy to look around and wonder, what's the point? But sometimes the point might just be to create instead of to destroy. My blog is, and always will be, a safe place for people who are not confident in their English speaking abilities. You will never be judged or mocked here. 1. Your English is probably better than you think it is. I've read many posts that ended with something along the lines of, sorry for my bad English, and was surprised because it was worded exactly the way a native English speaker would word it. 2. The main purpose of language is to communicate. Even if communication is a little awkward, as long as we can understand what the other person is trying to say, there's no need for it to be perfect. 3. You speak English better than I can speak your language. 4. You speak English better than I can speak English. 5. Being able to speak a second language at all is a huge achievement and something most of the people ragging on bad English are incapable of themselves. You're doing great. 6. Bad English suggests there's such a thing as good English. And have you seen this language? We just live like this. I am always disarmed realizing that I have an impact in somebody else's life. You laughed because of me? Smiled because of me? Was happy because of me? I exist and I have a bearing on how you feel? And I've evoked positive emotions in you? Truly wild to me. This is sweet, but also mildly alarming that this isn't built into our everyday. It's a surprise when it happens. Not something we're enjoying, but accustomed to. You should know how much of an impact you have on people. You should be made aware, you, your actions and your unique traits matter and have impact. People are supposed to be connected and have an effect on each other. Constantly. You exist. You matter. This is an everyday celebration. Remember it every day. My dad was dealing with some mixed feelings, so I told him, in therapy, when something is too complicated to do a simple pro and contra list, we sometimes do an exercise where you imagine all these mixed feelings around a table in some kind of conference, letting each tell their bit and you leading the debate. And my dad didn't really respond and just stared ahead, so I kept preparing lunch. Until a few minutes later when he suddenly piped up, I'm having a bad time at the conference. OP's dad. Constant mood. Brain blogging. Anyway, sorry to meme on your post, but this photo was the first thing to come to mind. Is that Alex Hirsch? Oh my god. Dear young adults, it's actually 100% normal to not feel ready for the world ahead of you. 
You spent the first five years of life just trying to figure out how to use the meat suit you were forced into. You spent another several years just learning to read, write, and do basic maths. High school is not an accurate simulation of how the real world works at all. You've been cheated out of actual life so far, so it's okay. It's going to take a few years to fully download the real user manual for adulting, and most of it is handwritten notes in the margins of life. Don't rush. None of us know either. And most of it is handwritten notes in the margins of life? This is a beautiful sentence, and I love it. Do you ever think about how sometimes it just takes one random message, and suddenly you find yourself with a best friend or in constant conversation with someone who lives on the other side of the world, but is just as much of a freak as you are? Or maybe you find yourself in love with someone without a last name, but with so much kindness and affection in their words and presence. Crazy how life and love and friendship just happen. Or you leave a few comments on someone's fanfic one night. Crazy how life and love and friendship happens. You know who you are. Love you, dearest. Many people seem to think it foolish, even superstitious, to believe that the world could still change for the better. And it is true that in winter it is sometimes so bitingly cold that one is tempted to say, what do I care if there is a summer? Its warmth is no help to me now. Yes, evil often seems to surpass good, but then, in spite of us, and without our permission, there comes at last an end to the bitter frosts. One morning the wind turns, and there is a thaw, and so I must still have hope. Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh? This actually made me tear up. Van Gogh had such a hard life. If even he, poster child of historical depression, can have hope, I can too. If I am worth anything later, I am worth something now. For wheat is wheat, even if people think it is grass in the beginning. Vincent van Gogh The fact that I'm no longer the same age as the protagonist of novels and films I once connected to is so heartbreaking. There was a time when I looked forward to turning their age. I did, and I also outgrew them. I continue to age, but they don't, never will. The immortality of fiction is beautiful, but cruel. It is really cool to look back on how young they are, though. It puts so much new context on the trials they endured and responsibilities they shouldered. I can appreciate how much they took on willingly and how much was forced onto them so much better now that I realize how young they were. And that feeling grows as I do.